this was one I did about Oak Hill Cemetery Association, which is just about the cemetery association and the development and when they moved and okay. when they acquired land and what they did with it. <laughs> Maybe this is the one that I... This had pictures in too? Yes, I don't have the pictures in okay. there. Okay, yeah, this was the one pictures. I read mm -hmm. with the pictures in it. Yeah, it has pictures. There's not a lot of pictures of the cemetery. No. But there is, uh, the, the windows were in there. The windows, yep. I think those are ones that I had taken for this. Right. Um, and um, let's see, there's yeah, the a history, picture of the cemetery without the chapel. Well, today we're uh, today is October 1st. Uh, the, Jim, and, uh, Jim Crittenden and uh, myself, Richard Snyder, are sitting in the home of Maurice Montgomery here in Janesville, Wisconsin. We're going to do a uh, interview uh, with him about his uh, books that he wrote on the Oak Hill uh, Cemetery Chapel in uh, Janesville, Wisconsin. And uh, uh, first of all, I'd like to ask you, uh, Maurice, about uh, the reason that you got involved uh, with the book uh, and uh, the Association of Oak Hill Chapel? Well, it was actually, I guess, for the Historical Society, um, really uh, kind of as a fundraiser, in a sense, um, although the chapel one uh, was the one I did on the chapel was supposed to, the funds were supposed to go back to Oak Hill Cemetery. Um, and I think they did. Um, but the, there was kind of an interest in the community about finding out why these buildings were there because they were, uh, um, they were not used very often uh, anymore. And they're, of fair size and um, way out of the way and why were they there people <laughs> why are they up there you know and then we'd have problems because there there was some beautiful stained glass in the chapel windows at Oak Hill and um, they would get broken out you know um, stones would get thrown <laughs> and um, and then they were covered in with some uh, gold colored glasses, I remember it. Um, but the windows had survived. They were all in the basement um, uh, in disarray, you know. And, um, so at, at what time were they removed after the damage? Uh, I had read in your, in, I believe it was uh, one of your books that there was a, a house cleaning of the basement, I believe it was in 1969. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it must have been before that time well, that frame. In about 1969 is when they discovered that there were all of these glass windows down in the basement. Wow. You know, the, the basement is not, I believe I'm correct on this, the basement to the chapel is not accessible from inside. You have to go outside. That's right. Yeah, okay. And um, these glass windows were then down in the basement there. Um, and um, people began, you know, asking questions about where they were. I guess the sextons of the cemetery had taken them, you know, when they were damaged, they would take them down and put them in the basement, and there they were. I see. Broken, but still there. <laughs> right. Well, then in 69. And then they just were, then they replaced the glass in the window frames with a kind of a gold color. Yes, like a bubble glass. Like a bubble glass, yes. And um, that's where. That's where we are now, I believe. Yes. Yeah. 
and of course they were very uh, attractive to to young people, I guess, young boys coming along to pick up a rock and toss it through the window. Um, the other thing, of course, is that the cemeteries are at the edge of town, and uh, therefore uh, uh, they're not really patrolled by anyone, maybe once in a while, you know, so they're subject to vandalism. Yes. It's not, you know, well, the house can too. be broken into, yes. you know, and people are living in the houses, but here there's no one, and it's a big, a fairly good sized structure. You know? Yes, in years back they didn't put storms over stained no. glass windows like they do today to protect them. There was little protection even up through, I would say, World War II. I don't think there was anything on the windows until after World War II. And now it's just wire mesh. Well, which yes. would it would deflect a, a stone, but. Well, it would be very expensive, but there are a strengthened glass yes. that could be used to cover the original windows if you want to do that. That's what I would but recommend, and that's, yes, I, I have uh, made those applications to certain chapels and churches, in fact. Mm -hmm. That even today, well, this was uh, probably about eight years ago up north. Sure. A uh, country chapel uh, that was unprotected. And the church members uh, knew that I was into art class and asked me to, mm -hmm. to uh, come up with the price. And they even helped in uh, applying the, the tempered glass over the windows. The big problem, I think, with the chapel is that we need to find a use for it so that it is available to the public um, on a regular basis um, and uh, becomes known and a part of the community. You know, that it's here, it can be used, and this sort of thing. But our mortuary or funeral arrangements have um, changed over the years, you know, and uh, we like to use uh, the funeral homes, funeral parlors, and that's okay. Um, but we're ignoring that whole era back and uh, as we've done with many things, you know, if we find an easier way to do it or a more convenient way to do it, and so we put the old way aside. Right. And that's what's happened with the mortuary chapels. And they're beautiful. Uh, the stained glass, much of it was given in memory yes. of uh, people who uh, were buried in the cemetery or um, had some standing in the community, social standing uh, in the community, you know, and and it's lovely glass. It's, it's mid nineteenth century it's, glass. It's very interesting, yes. And yeah, the the one memorial uh, window there on the front of the building, the chapel is uh, it's still there by Judd, uh, Doctor Judd and his Dr. wife, the young yeah. son yeah. that passed. That window is still intact. It is damaged. It, it needs yeah. to be rebuilt and restored. Yeah. And I believe the one to the left is uh, partially there. The bottom half uh, with the memorial emblem is gone. Mm -hmm. Bubble glass has been replaced in there. That window, uh, Jim and I did not find in the basement when we found uh, oh, the well. glass that was lost all these years. Uh, that part of it might have been there because uh, they used a uh, amber, uh, wispy type glass and we did find a lot of it and it's pretty much the same as the one on the right. Okay. But uh, mainly that type of glass isn't on the south side so it would have to go there. Yeah. And uh, so part of it could have been found, uh, but the memorial emblem itself is gone, but we know who it was for. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, so that could be reproduced mm -hmm. and restored, that would not be a problem. And bring it back to its original design. Well, it's like many things. And I, as a historian, I've, and in more recent years, I've kind of sat here and thought about different things, you know. It's wonderful to preserve things, but unless we have a use for them, they're going to deteriorate. Yes. And they will receive, they need constant upkeep and maintenance. And if we don't do that, they become problems. And that's part of the issue, I think, with the chapel. You know, it's not used, and um, so it becomes, um, you know, it's very tempting, I think, to uh, a young boy or sure. you know, somebody uh, right. um, to vandalize it because it's unoccupied right. and it does sit away from uh, some residences. There's, there's some that are fairly close to it, but it's not in a, a settled in that in that sense, a settled area, you know, so right. it's it's separate from. Well, but I the, was. But the beautiful, the beautiful windows. Yes, it's a they beautiful are. little chapel. I think that uh, hmm. mainly the problem is, like you said, is that the the funeral homes in town, it's they built their own facilities, bigger facilities. They can uh, have bigger types of uh, funeral for larger families, right. gatherings, and it's drawn away from that old chapel. Mm -hmm. I think for the families of smaller groups that don't need the big facility, mm -hmm. that they should possibly get together and uh, or individual bases and recommend the small chapel on a less uh, for cost mm -hmm. uh, of a funeral for those but families you're that you're competing with the funeral industry. That's right, but it's yeah. the fact is it's they've drawn away. We well, can all share. Well, yes, but you've got to get them all to go. <laughs> well, you individually to to go maybe. <laughs> yes, individually, <laughs> I guess <clears throat> it's a possibility that maybe the use is there. It's just looking at it in a different way. Looking at it from a different way and maybe changing our ideas of uh, how uh, a funeral or last rites for people um, ought to be connect conducted or could be conducted. Right. You know, and and the, the thing is, most people, like you say, don't even know it's there if, if this is brought out that it's a usable mm -hmm. chapel and that it's, it's there for their use if they want to have a small service. I think that the draw is there. It could be there. And I don't, uh, thinking about it uh, a number of years ago, and it came back to mind after you called, I thought, you know, we should encourage our churches to use That's it right. also. Yeah. Maybe if it was only one or two Sundays, um, a year, right? You know, if they had a service or a special something. That's a very <laughs> good other. point. Yes. Or um, maybe we could a have special a special service. Yeah. Yes. Or a special uh, civic, like a Memorial Day, remembering all of those who are there. That's right. There, the cemetery is full of World War One. Well, World War Two also, but World War One. Certainly, and Civil War, all you know, all the way back. I think, if I remember right, I think the earliest is a Spanish, no, not Spanish, before the... 1812. 1812, that's right. Wow. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, he's buried, he is buried there, he's a veteran, um, he's buried there. Because I know in my cemetery book, I think I refer to him um, and the monument uh, right. and that period yes. anyway. <laughs> so One of the uh, stories that, or the statements that you put uh, in your book uh, that I found moving was that uh, a lady had uh, written in 
to the paper that she was hoping that uh, the city of Janesville would, or maybe it was the rail company, would finish putting the tracks in down Washington Street, down to the entrance of the cemetery where she had a, a deceased son that was difficult for her to walk, to make the, the walk all the way down to visit and she couldn't make that visit when she wanted to because there was no streetcar mm -hmm. that went right. down that far. Yeah, I, I, uh, have, I remember that now. Uh, yes, she had written in and asked if they could do that, you know. Yes, and I believe years later they did that. They did. Uh, it, these streetcar lines ran out Washington Street. I think to at the edge of the um, cemetery property. So she still would have had a block or more right. to walk to get into the cemetery. But at least it was closer <laughs> yes. than before. That's right. And, you know. But it was a real problem. Yeah. You know? Well back then it was outside of town probably. It well originally I think it was outside of town. You yeah. know? It was not an in town cemetery. Right. As it is now. It's a beautiful cemetery. It is, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, pictures in your uh, book too showed the building of the front uh, mm -hmm. stonework. The stonework. Yeah, yeah. that was uh, very interesting. And of course, block and tackle and the old way of lifting, lifting the blocks and <laughs> true yeah. workmanship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, to figure all that out and get it just right and safety and mm -hmm. a lot of history there. Yeah. Yeah, there, um, there used to be, when I was growing up, there was a caretaker, a sexton, for the cemetery. And I don't remember his name, but he and his family lived in the, on the cemetery grounds. And he was responsible for the care, you know, of the cemetery. And I do kind of remember that the gates would often be closed, you know. He, and I think maybe that was part of his duty, duties, to close them at night and open them in the morning or, or something like that. I'm right. not sure, but, you know, so times change and we yes. live differently. And right. I don't think you'd find maybe many people who'd want to live in the cemetery. And I believe the house is gone. I it don't is. think it's yeah. there anymore. Right. Yeah. But Do you uh, have any uh, recollection of what that top uh, round window, the design? There is no oh. referral to that design. That's in the chapel. It. Isn't it? It. Well, the glass is not, it's been replaced with uh, yellow bubble glass, okay. but the, the actual stained glass, it's referred to in your book as the Knights of Pythias. The Knights of Pythias. The design itself, and that's connected with, did you say Lily's gem? Mm -hmm. That's what I found in doing some research, yes. Right, and I've seen the emblem of what they have for their Knights of Pythias, but mm -hmm. I don't know if that emblem is what they use the window and it would be nice to know what the actual design was if it comes to the point of of rebuilding the window into that original design. You know I can't tell you that uh, in, in memory. Um, what I do remember is that the lettering Knights of Pythias was quite large and very visible. So it was more visible than the round of the the window, you know, so you knew who put that in. <laughs> right. So um, it was in a circular. As I remember it, it was like a circular form. Uh huh. Form of the name Knights of Pythias. And it said Knights of Pythias. Well, that's more than I got. And I don't know. Like the center part of it, then would be. Just uh, now, the the caretaker Rick that's out there now. Okay. He's he told me that told us Jim too that uh, 
there's a large safe in the in the basement of the maintenance house there and uh, they cannot get into it and they they've had people over to try and open it he believes that there's information in the safe that might give the maker of the windows or uh, pictures of the original design of the uh, chapel mm -hmm. from the front okay. you know the postcard that's in your your book mm -hmm. it's covered in ivy so you cannot oh, yes. see the actual round window you can see above the doors and you can see that's a, a, a fairly same design as the tops of the right and the left memorial windows mm -hmm. but uh, the very top the round uh, window on top they're a 48 diameter if it's Knights, uh, I the Knights of Pythias with some other design. And I didn't refer to that in there, in my book on it, or did I? Or just, I don't remember. Uh, just the fact that it was from right. the Knights of Pythias okay. was incorporated into that window. Okay. Now I did a little research yes. on the Knights of Pythias in Janesville, mm -hmm. and apparently uh, the organization was founded during the Civil War. Yes. And uh, I'm not sure, I think it was the 1870s that uh, a chapter was started here in Janesville. And uh, right at the turn of the century, which would have been right when the chapel was built, uh, a Janesville member uh, actually became the national uh, leader of the Knights of Pythias. And I'm afraid I don't have notes to, to give you his name. And uh, this reference, this reference that I found from UW up in Madison, mm -hmm. uh, claims that uh, the organization in Janesville pretty much uh, ended in around 1920. Okay. And uh, so they've they've been out of mm -hmm. Janesville for 90 years now, yeah. 93 years. Well, I think outside of lodges, a lot of the, there were a number of different types of organizations that were kind of like that, you know, and they had a, a, a dress code, I guess you would say. You know. And one other um, notation that I discovered is that they participated in a lot of the services mm -hmm. and what I call the, the grunt work of uh, helping people with uh, with uh, caretaking yes of the cemetery itself well of the of the uh, funerals Community. and um, okay. um, um, helping people in their time of need yeah. sure see I don't know if a post there are some postcards or photos. And I don't know if you could get that from what was on that round with that round window from those. You may might be able to. I don't know. It just barely is through the ivy. I mean, mm -hmm. you, if you had the actual card, it might be more visible. Mm -hmm. um, to look closely at it, but yeah, the ivy pretty much covers most of it. The center is a little bit more visible, but yeah. Yeah. It, it still is leaving out a lot. <laughs> and it would well, be nice, I hope Rick is right, that there's more records and information in that safe. Mm -hmm. You know, they haven't I opened it in many years. I remember being in place. Um, do you recall seeing that window in place? Oh yes. Okay, so yeah. and it's as I remember it, it's pretty full of lettering from who it's from. I see. So, so it's a memorial window too. It's a memorial window. Okay. I, I, what I'm trying to say is that it's not a decorative window in the sense of design. Right. You know, but it is a memorial. And the emblem and of the emblem. Knights of Pythias. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah, and, but it was right over the center. You know. 
just. I can. I remember <coughs> being in place. <laughs> yeah, it's it's sad to think that they knocked that one out to the point of they had to remove it. That's you know that'd be quite a throw for a kid to throw something up that far, compared well, to the windows on the right or the left. The sure. That are right there, almost uh, mm -hmm. eye level. Yeah. Well, and it's up over that port cochere. That's right. That was added too, so it's you know it's not. Yeah. It's not an easy throw. <laughs> I guess With uh, the sextons, then that had caretaking more yes. or less than of the chapel. Yes. Did they have any outside uh, areas of where they might have had offices or where they might have taken these windows other than on site <clears throat> that on site. somebody's forgotten about? It would be hard to believe they would throw them out. No. <clears throat> Not that I know of. Um, the Sexton's house was almost... Let's see, you come in and you go up to the chapel over here. And the sexton's house was on the other side. It was a big, great big thing. Mm -hmm. And that's since been... Well, it's been taken down. That's right. <clears throat> but I remember it being there. And I think the last sexton, well, not the last sexton. Gosh, I can't think. I remember him living there. You know, it was lived in. It was a house house. Right. Well, that was part of his wages. Yes. You know. Well, I read a, a story, uh, a article in your book about the Greens. The Greens. Okay. okay and they were caretakers there. Yeah. And they, they had rebuilt the home, re-roofed it, and, and yes. did some other work, and they lived off. Uh, promises until that work was completed and then they moved back and in. And then they moved back in, yeah. That's, mm -hmm. yeah. And that was, uh, I think, that wasn't, you know, I, I'm thinking maybe uh, in the 60s. Yes, it would have been, yeah, you're, you're jogging my memory now. <laughs> that's that's would be a good thing. Um, I was thinking back to the early 60s and 50s, and um, there was the house that was there. Uh, beside the house, um, well, there was the drive that went into the cemetery, but also there was, off of that driveway, there was another drive that went to a garage or barn-like storage behind that house, which the sext was that's where the sexton had his equipment and uh, a truck or something back in there. Sure. You know, it was back in there. And um, I'm trying to think more. There wasn't much development from the entrance of the cemetery going back to where it really begins. That was all pretty much lawn. But now I believe they're using part of it for, um, um, what do you call them, surface type burials? Not the tall monuments, but where you have the... Mausoleums? Ma no, not a mausoleum. Um, where you bury in ground and you have a like Milton Lawn. Oh. Lawn. Yeah. They're, yeah. They're called um, grave markers. Grave markers, okay. Okay. But that, I think, began uh, around that time. I remember that big house. Oh, it was big. Yeah, I think there's a photograph in your book. Yeah, well, it's two full stories yes. and a huge... A nice home. Above it. Yeah. <laughs> And um, now where are those, where do you find those photographs, like the originals? Um, 
Well, the, the postcard ones, some of them, are at the historical society. Oh yeah. Um, they should, they should have a collection of, well, they do of postcards. Right. And they should have those photographs. Right. Okay. When we talked on the phone, you mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. That. Uh, Although now. Uh, Ruth I'm thinking, uh, Anderson. Ruth Anderson should know about them. Um, I suspect that the photos that the association, the cemetery association had, I'm assuming that they probably are at the historical society also um, after they gave up the cemetery to the city. That's the mystery. Sure. Right. No, we can't get a definite... Uh, Understanding from anyone that really knows what? where those materials are. You would think it would be uh, been uh, handed over to the historical society. Mm -hmm. No, you see, the it's a city cemetery. Oh, okay, since 2008, when it was handed over. Well, yes. I mean, there was a cemetery association prior to that, right. but it's a city cemetery. Prior to the handover. Yeah. I see. Well, then there's other records that... There should be other records. I think that's what Rick's talking about then in the basement of, in the safe of the service building. Maybe. Well, you can drill out those lots. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he's. It, I asked him today if they money, had any they luck getting it open. He said, "No, not yet." Not yet. There are. No, uh, well, you can kind of tell. I think I referred to it also in the little book I did on the cemetery. There are not a lot of records. There are not. And I, <clears throat> it was often my thought that the sextons kept the records. And, you know, if they did a good job, you had good records. If you didn't have a good, good sexton, <laughs> your records were a little on the slim side. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I suspect. I hate to say it because it sounds kind of cruel, but the Sextons, I think, probably didn't care an awful lot. They weren't paid very well. And socially, there was a great stigma against the cemetery and, you know, the cemetery um, the people who worked there and the sextons and so forth, they weren't terribly important. Right. I'm, I guess I'm kind of telling a little few tales out of school, but well, but it's, it's, it's kind of true. It is, yeah, I could see that. Mm -hmm. And, but, the other thing, And I can't verify this personally, um, but it's what I've understood. Um, the cemetery used to be used more as a park. And I think I refer to this in, in the booklet that I did. It was part of the general park movement that developed, uh, you know, during the mid-18th century um, to set aside land that people could visit and um, where they could walk. And um, enjoy nature, you know, and, and landscaping and things like that. 
And the earliest parts of Oak Hill are like that. And th because they're, they're of that period. They're, they were designed in that period. And that's particularly the rounds that you could, where you come in and you go around, you know, and so forth. It's well laid out. It was very well laid out. Yeah, until later years when everything became very straight, <laughs> yeah, square. Yeah. You described that very well in your writing. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> but Park, yeah, I never thought of that aspect. Uh, you know, Janesville is the city of parks. Mm -hmm. and, well, uh, that was part of it. Yeah. And I think I refer to it, I think it's in there, too where people would take a, like a picnic lunch. Well, of course, this is the day of the horse and carriage. Right. And they would go up to the cemetery and they would spend the major part of the day over the lunch hour or whatever. And they would tend their grave sites. You know, whether they were anyone buried there yet or uh, whether they had just begun to put family members down. Sure. And they were responsible for mowing or trimming the grass and planting so so that in a sense, you know, the grave sites became extensions of their family and lawn. So they took care of them. Well we don't do that anymore, you know. And it it's kind of impossible, you know, because our our families disperse. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so we don't have big, huge plots with several generations of the family buried there right. and descendants. You know that sort of. Thing. I could. I can just picture that in a buggy ride. You know, mm -hmm. a beautiful day like today. Oh yeah. To take a little cruise up there. Mm -hmm. What well, a wonderful I've, experience. I think I refer to the, 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 um, some diary entries about doing that very thing of going up to the cemetery and, you know, having their lunch and, and, yeah. and then coming back home, you know, but taking care of the grave site, uh, clipping the grass and pulling weeds and yeah. things like that, you know. And uh, that was important. But it also created problems for future generations when they changed that concept and it became a, uh, much more the responsibility of the Cemetery Association to take care <laughs> yeah. of those. And people had planted trees and, and shrubbery and, you know, and hmm. fl had flowers and things like that. And that became, you know, became a problem. Yeah. You know. And the other problem <clears throat> was that the cemeteries, Oak Hill and so forth, they were laid out for a horse and carriage. They weren't laid out for automobiles. And so the, the, path, the roadways, the, the are roadways a little bit narrow. were quite narrow. Right. Yeah. Especially in the older part of the cemetery, they were quite narrow. And when they um, paved some of them or blacktop some of them, you know, they intruded into the the grave spots, I guess I want to say. They had to extend the wider. Was both uh, <coughs> cemeteries ever connected together? <coughs> no. Mm -mm. It's always been separate. Mm -hmm. I see. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and you know, that's kind of a They were side to side, side by side to begin with. Oak Hill was the Protestant cemetery, and um, all of it, all, all of it, yes. yeah, was the Catholic cemetery, and they were side by side. Well, then, of course, the, the Mount Olivet, no, not Mount Olivet, Oak Hill needed more land, or thought they needed more land, so they bought, and they bought around. So um, Mount Olivet is boxed in mm -hmm. completely. Wow. 
So originally and even to this day, it's Protestant? What? The chapel. Oh, kill. It was never very fancy. I mean, it was a very, it was a nice building, but it was, there was little on the interior to suggest denominational or liturgical, you know. There was a pulpit um, and a platform, you know, and that's about it. I think there may have been like a couple of reading desks. Yeah, Jim noticed today when we were up there uh, that there's two uh, memorials. Uh, one is a uh, plant stand, two of them, okay. one on each side of the podium. Mm -hmm. That is in memory, your memorial, <coughs> excuse me, memorial of Eric and Betsy uh, Wes, Wesby. And the other one is a cross that's hanging behind the podium on the wall, mm -hmm. a wood cross by William Hamilton. Would you recall them? No, I don't. The Hamilton name is familiar to me, but I right. don't know those I people. I just wondered how, how long possibly they've been. The Westbys are an old family here okay. in town, and there's still some Westby descendants here. Um, they probably don't even know that they have. Yeah, they're still there. You know. Yeah, they're still in the yeah. chapel. Uh, that could be used. You know, mm -hmm. they look like in good shape, and um, yeah, it's you know. And while we were there, we were there for about an hour. Mm -hmm. There were uh, four people that showed up: uh, a man and his brother that took pictures inside the beautiful windows and uh, were just engrossed in the chapel, read the story was, in the paper. Was this a special opening of the chapel? This was, they uh, just stopped? basically we had an interview, <coughs> oh. uh, a photo shoot with the messenger oh, okay. to do another story mm -hmm. to get the community interested mm -hmm. and uh, they, he met us up there to, to do that, and while we were there waiting, uh, these different people, uh, citizens, uh, came by. Mm -hmm. Just of interest because of uh, the news in the paper or sure. what they had heard. And why do you, when you were doing your research, you were just saying that there wasn't a lot of information to go by in order for the research to write in the book. Do you, and the information that could be out there that you didn't have access, if it is in the safe, uh, that seems to be un unopenable right now in the service uh, building in the cemetery, why would it be there and uh, nowhere else? Is that where the sextons would have put that information? I mean, why in the first place would it be in the safe? Well, yes, I suspect that would have, would be the reason why. Original copies. Original copies or book, whatever, they would have put and kept in the safe. Um, it was, like so many things, a private organization. You know, it was the Oak Hill Cemetery Association. So you purchased into it, and it was governed by people who were part of this community of Janesville. Right, the citizens uh, of Janesville. Citizens of Janesville, right. And they, you know, I guess some saw it as a service to um, kind of guide the cemetery along. Sure. You know, but there again, what I can, what I want to say is hopefully along the lines of truth, <laughs> truthful, but it's not very flattering. You know, they, they viewed it as something that needed to be done, um, and so they did it, but their real interests were not there. You follow? Right. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? It, yep. You know, okay. The we guidelines need, of yeah. management. 
of management. Right. We need to take care of this burial ground of our family and friends. But, you know, I've got other things to do. Right. So uh, it's always been a kind of... <laughs> second thought. <laughs> yeah, a stepchild. I right. guess if you yeah. want to put it there, a second thought, second thought is a good way to put it. Um, it's, and it's even, even its location, you know, it's not a primary concern. Well, and it's sad in a sense. In the 19th century, you read of people in their diaries um, or in letters and occasionally in the newspaper where they would go up to the cemetery. Um, this was the day with the horse and the carriage, you know, and uh, they would prepare. Well, this was also before the day when you had um, a sexton who took care of the lawns and, and all. And they would um, bring a lunch and they would take care of their particular grounds, burial grounds, to make, you know, to keep them uh, trimmed up. They didn't do the mowing. Um, Four times a year, I think it was. No, not even four. Three, three, three times, three times. Well, maybe four. Three or four times a year was all the time it was. It was mowed. It was never kept trimmed like it is today. Right. You know, and, and of course people get irritated if the grass grows too high. Right. You know, but it grew quite tall. I see. So if you wanted to have it look manicured, then you would take care of it yourself. The families you would go up there and yourself. spend the day with right. the family and have the picnic as well and make it a day event. A whole day event, right. Mm -hmm. And once, since you uh, have the buggy and horse, it pretty much is an all day thing. You just mm -hmm. can't run up there in 10 minutes. Well, it was out of the city, too. That's right. It was uh, it not quite a John. <laughs> right. You know, so, and there was plenty of grass for the horse to eat. Sure. Right, right around, you know, so. Um, yeah, I could picture that. That's something you would almost picture in a movie, mm -hmm. you know, and that was true yeah. life back then. Yeah, and Oak Hill was developed around, I think, in the eight, late 1850s, 1860 was when it kind of begun, began, earlier a little bit. Um, now, what am I thinking? The original city burial ground is now a public park. Um, It's where the original high school was built, the first high school. Um, because the city appropriated the land for the high school, and the land was the burial ground. <laughs> wow. now, and that's 4th Ward off of Racine? 4th Ward off of Racine, yep. right there. The park. The park, 4th mm -hmm. Ward Park. Yep. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That was the original wow. cemetery. I think that's in that book. Yeah, I, I remember seeing the building, the, the school building that they built. Okay. And telling about it. Okay. Well, you know, wow. and then. So it, the a, city really has connections with, <coughs> with the parks connected with cemeteries then in a way. Well, They've made the connection there. The cemetery, I think this is in the book too, the cemetery as it was originally designed with that rondelle and so forth, the swooping, you know, um, 
was designed as a park, as a parkland. Wow. Because that was part of the 19th century view of cemeteries, was that this is an area that you can go to and you can walk around and you can um, see the history of the community in those in the monuments to those who are buried there but it's also a scenic site it's part of the whole monument um, oh the architecture the, the of architect the monuments yeah the architecture yeah, of the monuments the layout of the cemetery the hills it's the park land you know and, and the whole thing it all goes together well and I never looked at it. I think I kind of referred to that a little bit in, in the book I did on, on it. But you know, that's passe now. We don't yeah. do that, you know. Well, the thing is, we should be doing it because it's history <laughs> for the kids. <laughs> well, we ought to take a, a class up there. Well, our history and, and is buried there. I mean, if that's, that's one way to look at it. That would be a, a wonderful class outing. If they have budget for that, I'm not sure, but to take a class up there and, and go and spend a couple hours of walking around and, and uh, looking at the, the stones and the dates and the people. The Historical Society has done some of that um, in the sense that they do give cemetery tours. I don't know annually if they're still doing them, but anyway. Um, you know, where they would pick um, monuments that are kind of eye-catching or unusual or so, and um, research those people, and it had their obituary. Oh, the listing. The listings, yeah. Of the, the different individuals. The different individuals like a and database. some of their obituaries. Right. Yeah. Um, With probably the, the location. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, location. Yeah. yeah, there are maps. Yeah, actually, you know, I think it is in here because I remember seeing the the map, the layout. Uh, maybe not this one. That's the history. Yeah, this one here. No. Okay. It's maybe because I remember the seeing the map. There we go. That's it. And that was very uh, the, interesting. Yeah, the map's up front, I think. Okay. Well, here's all the lots, blocks, and graves, okay. lot number and grave number. Yeah, that's just for those who are in that book. I see. That's not all of them. <laughs> well, yeah, there's, what, 28,000? Or... Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, a lot of information here, too. Uh, those are some of the early citizens and... Very interesting. Very well done. Uh, the books were just incredible to read and and uh, think about. It was uh, very well done, well put together. Well, thank you. I, I did I put a, quite a bit of time into that. <laughs> yes. Well, and we had done. They grew out of because of the cemetery tours that the historical. See, I was with the historical society, right. so we did cemetery tours, and that that book grew out of the cemetery tours that the historical society had uh, sponsored or right. whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But, well, it's been. There's a uh, great deal of difference between how we view cemeteries and how our forefathers in the 19th century, a hundred years ago or more, viewed them. They were, they were like repositories of great value because our ancestors were here. That's right. Yeah, it's too bad we've lost that, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's because of the distance we have with family members and it, it oh, gets yes. lost on the way. Well, sure, the whole thing. The, and family is a, a real important part of that because families scatter now, you know. It yeah. used to 
years and years ago, when people grew up in one locale and they married and lived in that same locale or very close by, and you know they were all interrelated. That's and you right. can see that in the cemetery with the, some yeah. of the burials. Yeah, generations. Generations, yeah, generations. So, it's a fascinating cemetery. As no different than others, uh, um, it's, I, I guess in our day and age, I think it's unfortunate that we don't make as much use of it as maybe we could, but that's the way we live. I don't know how to put it differently. Right. Well, that's, that's what we have to figure out is other ways to use it to make it pay for itself so if it comes to the point of restoration that this don't happen again well years down the road you for, have to make it available to the community that's but right. you also have to charge <laughs> yeah. in this day and age yes that's what it's going to take yeah I mean, it's a wonderful hall so there's no reason why there couldn't be meetings there you have limited parking, um, you know, but you have the facility. You can make use of the facility. It may cost some money. But the surroundings, the building, the windows, I mean, it, it's like no other. Mm -hmm. It's inspiring. It, it can be inspiring, yes. Um, I don't know if you could get the churches involved in, in it. That's the thought. Or maybe the funeral homes, or maybe both, and, you know, would, um, would help. That's a direction we'll have to follow. Mm -hmm. Well, this has been a real pleasure. I've, uh, <laughs> you've answered many questions well, that I've had. You've been so informative. Well, uh, thank you very then, much. Call me if you have you know, questions or think I can help somehow, I'd be glad to. Well, I appreciate that. It's a, it is a, it's a real treasure in a sense, you know, as other communities, Eastern communities have discovered about their cemeteries. There's a real treasure there. Yes. Um, not just the people who are there, but the layouts and the way it's, the whole history. Mm -hmm. The history of the community is there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but. Okay, well, we'll okay. end now and thank you again. Well, you're welcome. You're welcome anytime.